Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. Uh, this is a short uh, story I wanted to share on how Ananda, the Buddha's most closest, most beloved and a very, very excellent disciple, uh, he got fully enlightened. Right? So, this uh, the story is from the uh, book uh, Satipatthana Vipassana by Mahasi Sardao. Uh, the link to that ebook is uh, given in the description. You can, it's a free ebook, you can download it. Uh, so, so, Ananda is said to be the first cousin of the Buddha. So, he was like associated with the Buddha from very early on. And uh, after Buddha's enlightenment, he was like the personal attendant of Buddha. So, he travelled with Buddha all the places and whatever Buddha was saying in the discourses, he had this excellent talent that he could memorize it word by word. So, he he everything was there in his head, word by word, what, what Buddha said. So, uh, but still he was not an Arhant. So, after Buddha's death and within even Buddha's uh, living all, only, lot of monks who followed the Buddha's path, they became Arhants, that means fully liberated. But he did not become, right? And it was very surprising that, you know, someone with so much talent, someone which who had been there with the Buddha, travelled across the country, attended all the discourses, almost all the discourses that Buddha gave, he did not uh, uh, attain full enlightenment. So he was, so there are four stages of uh, awakening in, uh, in Buddha's teachings. First is the stream enterer, that means the person who has entered the stream of awakening. Second is the once returner, that is the person will, so stream enterer will take seven births uh, to en enlighten, fully enlighten. Another se second is the once returner, that means once he will have to return to this world. Third is non-returner, the person will not have to return. And fourth is arhanship, full enlightenment. I will cover this in a separate video. So, Ananda was a stream enterer, that is like at the stage one. So, there are four stages and in spite of being with the Buddha all this time and being so wise and he was the one who actually brought the monks, the nuns, he said that women also should be allowed to enter the Sangha, right? So, he was a very reformist person also. Still, he was at stage 1 only. So, it was uh, like that. And then after Buddha's death, when Buddha achieved Parinirvana, after his death, uh, uh, four months after his death, uh, all the senior monks, you know, uh, came together and said that, come on, let's, let's write down all the Buddha's teachings for our future generations, for people who can read what Buddha said. So, they were like 499 uh, Arhans. So, the qualification in that council uh, 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 who would collect, examine all the teachings was that the person has to be an Arhant. So, there were, before the council happened, there was like 499 Arhans. And they, they must have done some preliminary meeting and then before the actual meeting. And they said that, you know, Ananda is missing. And Ananda has to be there. Because without Ananda, how can we conduct? Because he is the person who knows it word by word what Buddha said. And he has been participating with, in the Buddha's discourses for all these discourses. So he has to be there. So the, maybe the uh, head of the uh, head of that council would have said to Ananda that Ananda, you are not qualified to attend, but we want you. So tell us what's the way. So Ananda was very, you know, kind of restless. That he wanted to be in that, he wanted to share all what he knew about Buddha's discourses. But still, just because he is not an Arhant, he is at like the stage one, uh, the stream enterer, he is not able to. So, the night before the, so the night before the council meeting had to happen, he tried everything. You know, what Buddha, whatever Buddha's teachings are, the Satipatthana Sutra, right? Mindfulness of walking, mindfulness of body, mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of walking, everything he did. He also then remembered that what Buddha said that uh, Aranda, you possess all the perfections, you will become an Arhant one day. And he was like, he said that I am doing everything, I possess all the perfections, Buddha told me that I will be an Arhant, but I am not an Arhant. And then, and then that light bulb, you know, the switch on happened in him that he has been too overzealous in his efforts, right? He has been too much into his efforts uh, of, of, of uh, 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 seeking enlightenment. So, so, what basically he said is that I have done enough of walking meditation and I have, you know, there is just too much energy, too much 
uh, sorry, too much concentration that has developed in me. I have to just relax a little bit. So what he did was that he said, okay, now I will do lying meditation. Lying down, I will do meditation. And I hope that will balance out my energy. So as he was like from his standing or sitting posture, he was into his lying down and complete lying down. As he was lying down, he must have said that, you know, the, the, what we do, the noting method, right? Lying, lying, lying down, lying down. And it is said that at that moment itself, when he was, when the thought of seeking enlightenment had gone in his mind and he was just, he just submitted and he just noted the moment as to actually how it is that he is lying down, the movement of his body, lying down, lie down. It is said to be at that moment that he became fully enlightened. And how it happened was that in that very moment between the sitting and the lying down, the movement of towards lying down, all the rest of the three stages, that means the once returner, non-returner and full enlightenment, full arhanship, he crossed all the three stages in one moment. So all these years, he was making all his regular walking meditation, sitting meditation, this meditation, diligently following everything, diligently following all Buddha's teachings, being with the Buddha in the, such a close company of an enlightened one, still he was not awakened. And in that one moment, he got awakened. And I will just say how lucky we are that he got awakened in that one moment because since he got awakened and become, became a full arhant, arhant, he had become an arhant, he participated in that council and today, whatever discourses you and me, we study, right? I always give a link, whatever discourses I discuss, I always give the link to the Sutra Central website and uh, for the actual links to the discourses. Most of these discourses are by uh, Ananda, right? Otherwise, we, uh, if Ananda would have not liberated, we would not have this knowledge, right? Because Buddha, when he travelled, he just gave the discourses. There was nobody noting it down. And Ananda was one of the foremost you know, disciples who actually, after Buddha's death, noted down all the discourses. So, so this was just the story. And, and it is said, it is said that this is an unusual event. In the commentaries, it was said that generally enlightenment happens only in like four stages. That means standing, either you are standing, either you are sitting, either you are lying down or you are walking. This was actually an unusual event where the person was neither standing, neither sitting, neither lying down, nor walking. So he was between sitting and lying down, right? And this is how he got enlightened. So there are just some lessons that, you know, we can draw if we just reflect on this story. The one lesson that what I'm just recounting, I've just made a list of points. What one lesson that I get from this is that have a balance in your practice. Neither be, you know, there are mistakes that we do. We, sometimes people become... Don't go in any extreme, right? See, we are not monks, right? We have our limitations also. So, don't go into any extreme. Buddha always, Buddha, even Buddha's fundamental teaching in the first sermon that he said, that don't go in any extremes, take the middle path. So, we have to live in this world and do our efforts. So, don't be too much, you know, over, you know, kind of uh, zealous on this path. Right? That can also be a hampering and don't be lazy also. <coughs> so there has to be balance of our energy. If we find ourselves getting too overzealous, we have to relax. Right? Do some resting meditation. Right? And if we find ourselves lazy, then we have to shrug off the laziness. Maybe you do we can do some exercise and you know to get off the drowsiness. Or in our in insight meditation, we can increase the points of you know our noting so so as to shrug off the drowsiness. So we have to find our balance in our practice. Second thing is, what I will say is, keep. let us all keep the focus. See, I hope who all ever are watching and myself, we have not yet reached even the stage one, right? So our goal here is to reach the stage one, which is becoming a stream enterer, stream enterer, right? The why why stream enter is because and as and what Mahasi says is that once you become a stream enterer, what happens is that that's the guarantee that you will never again go into the hell realms, the lower realms of animals, hungry ghosts, or all hell realms. 
because in those realms especially the hell realms there is intense suffering and it takes hundreds and thousands of years to be in those realms and the person even if he wants to practice he cannot practice because the suffering is too much why that is why the practice of insight is so important that so we have to do diligently the follow the five precepts no no killing no lying no stealing no sexual misconduct no drinking these are the basic five precepts precepts that we need to follow in our life do insight meditation keep noting each and everything i have a separate playlist on insight meditation morning evening do our insight meditation try that in this life we achieve at least the stream enterer because a stream enterer what happens is that he is then guaranteed to be on the path of awakening in the next seven births and he will either be in the human form or will take the higher realms will go in the higher realms the more better realms for his spiritual work so our first task is to become a stream enterer right so let us not lose focus of that of that and keep doing our work right okay and the third insight that i get from is from that enlightenment can come at any time and in a way that you know you would not have thought so even in zen tradition you see that they have this concept of satori immediate one in light one moment where enlightenment happens right so enlightenment can come in so what happens is we do all our practice and all our things and we do walking meditation sitting meditation all the precepts we follow and you know we are diligent people right and we see that nothing is happening no there are a lot of things that are happening inside which from a conscious level we cannot find out and it can be ha- like what happened with anand it can be just that one moment where we can be a stream enterer and we have to that's our first task so one is that we should not seek the goal of becoming a stream enterer focus in this moment being mindful in this moment but keep the focus don't lose hope even though things around us and we feel ourselves that no progress is happening progress is happening so let us you know uh, stay committed to our goal so this is it this is the story that i wanted to share i hope uh, uh, someone some of you have uh, got some insights from this story uh, and do share your thoughts reflections uh, your learning uh, your feedback in the comment section i'll be very happy to uh, read them uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye